Starting out into the Hunter Classic in 2023 can feel like a daunting task. With so many maps, species, and equipment choices, it can be tough to even know where to start. Whether you're just picking up the game or if you spent some time playing but need to know where to turn next, this beginner's guide aims to get you on the right path to success. Now I mentioned that there are a bunch of different options for where to hunt, and if it were me starting out here in 2023, I would head to Logger's Point. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and start a hunt here from the launcher. You'll have two different lodge options, one in the north and one in the south. I would choose the one in the south, I think it gets you on deer more quickly, more consistently. So we'll start a hunt here, and then look into what we want to do first. And now that we're here on Logger's, we're going to want to do a couple of things before we set out for a hunt. The first thing is to change our inventory around. If you've confirmed your email you have a kind of premium version of the 243, it functions exactly the same as the other one, so if you haven't, don't worry about it, but I do think it looks a little bit better. So we'll equip that with some ammo and a scope. The other thing is, you do start with a single shot shotgun. Now, with the limited carry capacity as a beginner, you can only select one other option for ammo here, and that doesn't matter if you carry extra 243 rounds or not, you're only going to get one box of shotgun shells. I would go with birdshot personally, however, that does mean there's one species on the map you can't hunt, those being feral hogs. Nothing we have is ethical to take them. The other option is though, if we take slugs and can hunt the hogs, rabbits and pheasants are unhuntable here, and I think as a beginner, you want to be able to shoot those small game animals. The last thing before we actually head out for a hunt is to activate missions. One thing you'll be able to do throughout the game is earn currency by doing missions. There's a couple of different ways to do this. If you're someone who can't stand having a bunch of uncompleted missions, I wouldn't click the activate all button, but for me, I think it's best to do that because now we're gonna have a ton of missions down here as this loads and some of them you'll complete by accident and earn currency you can use to purchase other things. So you see now we've got 21 active missions, including a couple for species on this map like Whitetail. We can harvest a whitetail deer and earn 100 GM. Those are going to go a long way to purchasing other equipment. Now with all that stuff out of the way, we're going to head out for our first hunt here on Logger's Point. So first things first, be sure to load your weapons. You do that just by equipping them and we'll do that for both the 243 and the 12 gauge shotgun so that whatever we run into will be ready to go. Now this guide is going to cover a range of topics, including but not limited to how to find animals, how to shoot animals, how to pick up and follow the tracks, and also generally how tracking works, including how to level up your tracking skills, and also some suggestions about what to purchase with your earnable in-game currency. That'll be for more towards the end, but for now, I want to focus on how to find animals. When I read Steam reviews for the Hunter Classic, the biggest cause of negative reviews is players not being able to find animals, and I suspect the biggest culprit is running around or kind of general impatience. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, we've got a herd of deer just out there. We can actually see them just on the top of the hill there. So we've kind of lucked out in this particular instance, but animals will make audio clues, just like that doe did there. If you're walking around and you hear one of those, equip your hunter mate, go ahead and identify it, and you'll see a ping on the map as to where that call came from. Now, it's not going to be super accurate as you're level one tracking. That ping will get more and more accurate as you level up. But we know the animal's within hearing range and we can go ahead and call to it, but we don't want to do it from here because if we sit here and let this animal come in, it's going to end up really in view and close, probably closer than we want it. So we'll get to a spot where we can see decently well and then we'll go ahead and call. Now again, in this case, we can see them. But even if we couldn't see them, we'd be crouching around because we don't want to spook an animal that we can't see. And we'd get to a spot where we can see pretty far. And I think in this place, we're going to be able to do that. So we'll go ahead and hit a call. And these mule deer does are going to start to move our way. Now, a couple of things about this. Again, one, we can see them, but we don't have a 50 cal here. We have the starting weapon 243. Could you shoot a mule deer doe and kill it at that range of the 243? Absolutely. Would I recommend doing it first thing as you start into the game? Probably not. You'll notice by the way that I am laying here prone. I do that because in case there's an animal coming from another direction that I maybe can't see, I've got a way lower chance of spooking it just by laying here. As you lay down in the grass, obviously, you're going to be way less visible than just sitting here crouched. I have seen a lot of people play the Hunter Classic over the years, and when they call on animals, they do sit there crouched. It can work. But I think going prone is a little bit safer. 
you'll also notice I am sitting here calling relatively often. You literally cannot overcall in this game. You can sit here if you want to and just hit this thing over and over and over. You'll not spook animals. Nothing bad is going to happen by overcalling. Now, you don't need to. I would say a call every minute or two is fine. But I mentioned we may have animals coming in that we don't see. This, though, is coming in from the left a little bit closer than the other ones. And again, it's a good reason to really get low as soon as you have an animal call. You don't want to spook something that you don't know is around. Now, it's my personal opinion that it's just good to get comfortable with frontal angle shots. In the tutorial that you played, you probably shot a mule deer buck pretty broadside. That is ideal. However, I think the most consistent ways you're going to get shots at animals is by calling them in, and they're just going to walk straight to you. So I would let them get as close as you're comfortable with and learn to make a frontal shot, which we'll do here, and I'll show at least where I aim. Now, if you listen closely, you can hear the footsteps of this mule deer doe as she approaches. That's a good rule of thumb that she's probably under 40 meters. Now, we can't see that well, so we're going to go ahead and crouch so we can see her chest. We're going to aim right about center of the chest and take that shot. I don't know if we hit the heart or maybe got into lungs, but either way, it was enough to drop her inner tracks. That's not something necessarily that'll happen every time, but if you can get that shot center of the chest, not too low, you're going to bring down your deer more often than not. In this case, we did hit the heart as well as the left lung, and you see here no score CSS of zero and reward zero GM. I think it's good to shoot those, especially as you start out, if for no other reason than the fact it is good practice for when a buck shows up. However, you're not going to earn any currency from doing that. Now, there are missions, not from your deer, but I think whitetail and some other species, where it'll start out as like spot a whitetail, ID a track from a whitetail, harvest a whitetail. That can complete missions and earn you GM that way. However, when it comes to actual harvest providing GM, the earnable currency in Hunter Classic, you do want to target males, as the females, for the most part, don't give a GM reward. There's some species that are an exception, but they need to be a female animal that provides a score. Now, tracks. That is another thing, and you'll see as you walk around in the world of the Hunter Classic, there are these kind of domes in a bunch of different places. You see that kind of red dome there in front of us? That indicates a track. When we click on this track, it's going to go from a little thin line as we back up and we can see it again. It is a kind of full dome now. It's fully filled in. That indicates that we're on that particular trail. And if we want to follow that deer, we're only going to click on those tracks. So we see this cone up here is the kind of full cone. So we'll continue to click on those. And again, if we're tracking this deer, we're going to ignore all the tracks that look like this. Now you'll notice that one was roaming. That's actually an old track. As you level up your tracking skills, things like the age of the track, the gender of the animal that left the track, the weight of the animal that left the track, those sorts of things will be available on your hunter mate. However, for now, we kind of have to go based on context clues. We know we spooked these things. This is a fleeing track, so that's going to be a more fresh one. We are not, though, going to bother tracking a herd of mule deer does. So what we're going to do instead is rather than focus on one particular trail, actually pick up every single track that we see. The reason is, as you pick up tracks in Hunter Classic, you will gain tracking skill. That tracking skill goes up to level 20, you start at level 1 obviously, and you gain more information about the tracks as you level up. The most important thing to do when it comes to the trails is try to get all three of the red dots there on our Hunter Mate filled. That gives you the best kind of experience towards your tracking skill. So you see on this one, we have all three of the trail red dots lit up. We really don't need to worry about picking up more tracks from that particular animal. It's tough to know which one is that animal unless we have it ID'd. So in my opinion, just walk along. Every one of these clues you see, go ahead and click on it. And again, if you're not going to bother targeting that species, you don't really have to worry about which one you're picking up. And it's going to go towards leveling up your tracking skill. And if you're super patient and someone who really wants to work on that, you can go along, follow this herd, keep on clicking on tracks, and there we go, by the way, mule deer tracking skill level up to level two. It's a really good practice to get into when you see a track, even if you're not gonna follow that animal, click on it and ideally go up to the three red dots for the trail. If you're not patient enough for that, you don't really have to do it. You will just naturally level up as you pick up more tracks, but the fast way to level up is by doing this. So we keep walking along and we keep waiting for more clues. In this case, we actually had a buck run. And 
We can tell that it was a buck, even though the hunter mate doesn't tell us that. For most species in the Hunter Classic, the male and female calls are just audibly distinguishable. However, if you can't tell the difference, eventually the hunter mate is going to tell you that, I think when you're up to level three tracking. So, we've got a pretty good spot here already. We're along the road. We might as well go ahead and hit the call. When you've got a road or an open space like this, what I would do is lay down right on the road. Solid cover, as they tell you in the tutorial, matters, but things like grass and stuff really don't help you that much. So instead of being in the grass and not being able to see, I would just kind of get out into the open and at least be able to survey your surroundings. And we see our buck is on his way in. This is a pretty average mule deer buck. And what I will say is generally speaking, males in Hunter Classic are going to be a little bit more aware of their surroundings than females. So we maybe don't want to let this buck get as close as the doe that we shot. However, when you're prone, even with no camouflage, no cover, 20 or 30 meters is a pretty safe bet the animal's not going to see you, unless maybe it's a really high scoring one. But even at that, if you're not moving, you're pretty safe to let him get around that range. So again, we're going to let him walk in until we can hear his footsteps. I can just faintly hear him here. Another thing to take into account, if you're playing with like a headset on or earbuds of any kind, you'll hear those footsteps a little earlier. If you're just playing through speakers, you may hear them a little bit later and he might be more like 30 meters, but he's well within range now. And I am going to try to not drop this one just so we can look at tracking a little bit. So instead of center of the chest, I'm going to go off to the side a bit and hopefully shoot him in a single lung. Now there's a chance we didn't get a single lung, but hopefully that punched into a lung and we can look at that. The fact that he dropped right there would indicate that indeed we did hit a lung, but there's still plenty we can look at just in these couple of meters between the shot and the place that he went down. I've gone ahead and let the actual hit blood go away. When you shoot an animal, there's going to be some blood on the ground that is not necessarily indicative of the organs that you hit. And this here actually looks to be body blood, which would mean we didn't hit an organ. We'll look at that a little bit more closely, but one thing I also wanted to touch on. You can change the color of your tracks by going into the options. We're going to go to gameplay and you can make them whatever you want. For me, this really bright blue has always shown up well. So we're going to do that over the kind of red coloration. So as you go along, you're going to, especially once you've shot an animal, stick to your active trail and keep on following it until you end up at the down body of the animal. Now, in this case, we knew where he went. He ran at a pretty straight line. It was not a problem. Sometimes it will be a problem. Sometimes they won't always follow this kind of cone you get in the hunter mate. You've got that sort of two lines that give the general direction of where it ran. Things can get difficult there, and we'll try to look into that a little bit more in a bit. Now, that's interesting. We shot that one in the lung, but that was not your typical lung blood laying there on the ground. I don't know if that's something with tracking skill that maybe has changed. That I will try to confirm. However... We obviously hit him in the right lung, 158 score, and this time a reward of 74 GM. The gun that I think would be a pretty good purchase for any new player is the 300 board action rifle. It can take the straight four power scope that's already on our 243. It can take pretty much every animal in the game outside of a couple of small game animals and I think water buffalo. But the maybe toughest part about it is that it costs 11,000 GM. That's going to sound like a lot, but once you start to do some missions, which we'll look at in a moment, that's going to maybe seem a little more affordable. But as you hunt around, you want to continue with that same approach of listening for audio clues, getting into position, and calling the animal in. And a couple of things we haven't touched on yet. You'll notice as we leave the binoculars on this guy, in the top right, some information appears. Species mule deer, gender male, weight and score unlock at future spotting levels. Much like you want to pick up every track, if you can, you'll want to spot every animal. So like this cottontail rabbit that just ran over here for no reason, we can spot that as well. We also are going to try to find out what the deal was with the blood. So we've got a little bit of a quartering angle here, and that can be kind of useful. We also just had another buck grunt, so we will identify that. That was also a mule deer, so we might as well go ahead and take this guy. And since he's not facing us directly, we're going to shoot kind of right in front of the shoulder. Now there was a thing there that happened that's really difficult to kind of describe, but there's sort of a particular animation when an animal is about to stop. I don't know if I can describe it, but if you kind of go back and watch that, there's just a little kind of hesitation while that mule deer is walking. That's indicative that he's going to stop, and I've always 
struggle to explain exactly what to look for, but you see it, and as you play, you'll start to recognize that. I am beginning to think that the blood shows differently based on your tracking level now. It hasn't always worked that way. But again, this deer ran for maybe five seconds. It's going to be a lung shot, but this blood is not your typical lung blood. So I suppose even more important now is picking up every track. Now I should also note, your tracking skill levels are individual. So you've got mule deer tracking, you've got whitetail tracking, you've got tracking for every species in the game. So not only do you want to pick up all your mule deer tracks, you also want to pick up all your whitetail tracks, all your feral hog tracks, whatever you may see. So again, single lung shot, 141 score and 64 GM reward, but the blood does not show as it typically does. I'll show what it typically looks like. There's a couple of things we're going to show from the main account I have, in which we're level 20 for most tracking, and I'll also show a side-by-side -side comparison of what a mule deer blood track looks like here versus when you're level 20. And you can just see a lot more information is available to you that you can gain by leveling up your tracking skills. Same goes for spotting. When we spot a mule deer as a low level, we don't know the potential weight or score ranges. When you've got a high enough skill level to see those things, you've got a pretty accurate range of what the animal may weigh and score. Now this is always useful. We can see pretty far from here, and I've recommended walking around with your hunter mate and listening for calls. However, especially in places where you can see really far, and again, one of the reasons I recommended Logger's Point is it's very open, it's got a lot of hills and meadows and places where you can glass around. Use your binoculars and see if you can spot any animals. This whitetail buck down here is actually going to be really key for us for a number of reasons. I think this goes back to when the only animal you could hunt as a free-to-play player was whitetail deer. Just for the sake of clarification, that is no longer the case. You can hunt anything you want as a free-to-play player. But in order to unlock a lot of the different missions, you actually have to do the first couple of whitetail missions first. So those are identify tracks for a whitetail deer, spot a whitetail deer, and harvest a whitetail deer. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now there are signs that an animal is spooked and won't respond to a call. This is one of those signs. See how he's kind of flicking his tail around, he's picking up his leg, looking around. That whitetail buck is spooked, and he won't come into a call for probably 5 to 10 minutes. Obviously when we shot our last mule deer buck, it actually spooked him. So we'll probably go for a longer shot here, and we'll see if we can land that with the 243, get his tracks, and harvest him for the whitetail missions. One big advantage here is the fact that he's pretty broadside. Now we also have a feral hog here. I'll talk about those more in a moment because I do want to make sure we make this shot before the buck starts to walk away. So he's a little quarter. We'll keep that shot a bit back and that's going to drop him in his tracks. Generally, you want to aim right behind the shoulder for a broadside shot. That was not perfectly broadside. So to compensate for the angle, we would aim a little further behind the shoulder. Now, feral hogs. Without slugs loaded in your shotgun, they are the one species on Logger's Point you cannot ethically hunt. You can still shoot them if you need them to go away. You're just going to get a message from doxing used improper ammo. They will attack you. And that can be rather annoying. If you don't have medkits, you'll be forced to fast travel back to one of the two lodges on the map. So you do want to be on the lookout for them. If you got to shoot them with burst shot or your 243 to make them go away, that is totally fine. You're not going to be penalized in any way for doing that. But be on the lookout for those guys. Now, I mentioned we need three tracks from a whitetail deer. Anytime you ever have a mission that requires you to pick up three tracks and you find and shoot an animal before you've done that, don't claim it, find his tracks first. And all we'll need to do is basically backtrack him. So we know this is a whitetail deer track. By the way, another thing here, notice that on this track, I'm gonna get away from the water so we don't have to hear that as much. What we see is just the whitetail buck symbol on the hunter mate. The reason we know that and the reason it doesn't show a buck and a doe, as if we don't know, is because we've already spotted him. If you ever have spotted an animal and you're looking for its track, one way to know is if the hunter mate tells you the gender of the animal. Again, you have to have already spotted it. So, we've spotted this buck. We've got a third track from it that will do that objective for our mission. That's completed that mission you see in the top left. Again, I mentioned we spotted it, so we're good to go ahead and harvest this guy. By the way, just in case you're curious, you can see what you need to do through the missions. There are mission packs, so we're going to scroll to the bottom of this. We've got the whitetail deer missions. We've tracked a whitetail deer now. We've located the three tracks. We have spotted a whitetail deer. Now we need to harvest a whitetail deer, so we will do that. 
This guy, we actually double lung shot at 93 meters. So you can see the 243 is very capable. Just as a beginner, I would definitely err on the side of caution when it comes to the shots that you go for. So first we're gonna have the one white tail deer achievement. And as we walk away here, we should get confirmation that we've completed the harvest a white tail deer mission, which we have. That is going to unlock the other missions and make our earning potential for GM way, way higher. So for instance now, with Mule Deer, we can complete the Harvest a Mule Deer Buck mission. Now you might be wondering, why did I not start out this video by looking for a Whitetail Deer? If we could have gotten a Whitetail first, that would have been great. However, for both lodges when you spawn at the south or the north, the most likely thing you're going to run into is a Mule Deer. And it's not a terrible thing to learn how to hunt with Mule Deer until you find a Whitetail, do those missions, and then whatever you may spot, whether it's a Mule Deer, a feral hog all these other missions give you options to start to earn gm i mentioned the feral hog the first mission you don't have to shoot one all you gotta do is find three tracks in three different areas of loggers point now that may take a while but that is something you still want to work on doing even though you don't have a ethical weapon at least at this point without slugs equipped we can still earn gm by tracking stuff so now we get into missions and there's a whole lot to talk about here but we are going to work on the Mule Deer missions first. They are one of the most beginner friendly mission packs. Not the most beginner friendly, but one of the most beginner friendly. There's a reason for that. And that is the fact that for the most part, up until you get to one of the very last missions, there is no specific weapon requirement. That is one of the things that probably will hold any beginner back in the Hunter Classic when it comes to doing missions. You eventually hit a point, I think it's this one here, 270 degree angle. You need to shoot a Mule Deer with a 270. Now, when you click on these, it doesn't tell you what to do. It says you first have to complete the prior missions. There is a link in the description to this video for the Hunter Wiki that basically lists exactly what all the missions are, in what order, and the items that are required to do those missions. Mule Deer are pretty beginner friendly, and one thing you'll notice if you click that link and look at the missions, as you go along, your first mission is going to reward 100 GM. The next one I think is 200 GM and so on. When you get to the end of those packs, you're making like 36 or 3800 GM for the last mission. For Mule Deer, we're not going to get to the very last mission. Unfortunately, the weapon is going to be required for one that we don't have, and we're going to have to move to another pack. But that is the way that I would get started in the Hunter Classic. Do missions until you hit that point where you can no longer complete missions, you don't have whatever weapons required, and there's two options. Move to another mission pack and just start from the very beginning, or you can try to get a friend to help you out. You can, in multiplayer, complete missions even if you're not the one to shoot an animal. The requirements are to, for instance, harvest a white-tailed deer, harvest a mule deer. You don't have to be the one that shot it. So if you need to shoot a mule deer with the 270, if you have a friend that owns the 270, go to multiplayer, have them shoot the mule deer, you harvest it, mission complete. Now mule deer missions. If you've ended up doing the exact same thing I've done, and you've shot a couple of mule deer, but until you get the whitetail missions done, you're kind of, you know, in a spot where you've already shot a couple and you don't know where to turn next to find more, you could start a new hunt, that is perfectly fine, or you could fast travel to the other lodge. Like I said, the deer that kind of inhabit the areas right around the lodges typically are mule deer. You can run into whitetail close to them, but not as often. I'm also leaving this up so you can see the path that we walked to encounter the three or four deer that we've shot so far. So what we're going to do is fast travel to this northern lodge, and we're going to have to walk a bit, but I think we should be able to find a mule deer to get going on those missions. And just to kind of show the way that we're going to go, we are basically going to make a beeline for that tower right there. So we've arrived here at the tower with no sign of any mule deer bucks around, not at the tower nor on our journey here. And that's just going to be the way that it is sometimes. This is a good spot for mule deer, but especially being an hour and a half into the hunt, you just can't always expect to find animals in the same locations every time. And that in a nutshell is the beauty of the Hunter Classic. So I do actually want to start another hunt anyway, mostly because that should get us the tracking skill level two working properly. And what I mean by that is when you level up to a particular level of tracking or spotting that unlocks a new thing. So whether it's when we can see, you know, what the blood type is, level two tracking gets the blood type. So we should see lung heart versus intestines versus body. When we shoot something now, level three will get us the gender of the call, etc. That only happens once you start a new hunt. So we'll do that. We'll check out how the blood works and we'll get going on our mule deer missions. Now in this hunt, we've not even made it to that tower yet, 
And we've already got a whole group of Mule Deer bucks coming. And you can see, we're on our way to the tower, and they were obviously in that area. So it is a good spot. You just can never fully predict where deer are going to come from. So a couple of things I want to backtrack on. Number one is the ability to place a marker with your binoculars. So we're actually going to intentionally take this shot from a little farther away so I can kind of show what I mean. And hopefully we can still land a long shot. So a little bit of a frontal angle. That hopefully is what we're looking for. And we can still see on the ground that spot of blood. We're going to take our binoculars. We're going to, as best we can, center that spot of blood on our screen. Left click, you hear a little kind of ping. Now when we look at our hunter mate, see that red dot? That is the exact location of the center of our binoculars when we left click and place that marker. So if you do go for a longer shot, if you see an animal in the distance, maybe that's over a hill and you're going to stock it or something, a really good practice to get into is placing that marker so that you can find the animal or the blood or whatever you're looking for. The other thing is, I, I think at the beginning of the video, failed to mention the activate automatically activate new available missions. Be sure to check that so that your missions are going to activate. I think I missed that, but obviously if you want to make use of even missions maybe that you don't know are active, that's a good way to make sure you're going to get some GM, sometimes even by accident. And I can see already from here, the blood has changed, so either there's some kind of weird bug going on, or it is intentional that you don't actually get blood types until you've gotten to level 2 tracking. So now when we ID this, we're going to see the source is lungs or heart. That doesn't mean lungs and heart. That's been a source of confusion for forever in the Hunter Classic. It's lungs or heart. If you hard shot pretty much anything with any weapon in the Hunter Classic, it's going to drop immediately. So we're going to follow that trail. It's going to be much like before, just a couple of tracks. And that'll lead us to our Mule Deer Buck that's going to complete the first Mule Deer mission. On our walk over here, I decided to go ahead and calculate just how many GM we could make from doing the Mule Deer missions up until we reach that point that we need a weapon that we don't own. That amount is 5100 GM. That's a lot. I mentioned the 300 as being a really good kind of beginner weapon to maybe buy as your first purchase. That costs 11,000 GM. You could be halfway there just from doing the Mule Deer missions. Now, will it take some time? Yeah, I mean, we're earning some GM in doing the missions outside of the actual mission rewards, like 65 GM for this buck, but it can be done. Also, we've now reached Mule Deer tracking skill level three. So when we start a new hunt, when a Mule Deer calls, we'll be able to identify male or female. I also want to mention the Hunter Wiki again. I mentioned this specific link to the missions. The Hunter Wiki has a ton of different information you can find, whether you want to know what level you need to get to to see like the health percentage on tracks, whether you want to know what level you get the weight on tracks, and tons more information is all throughout the wiki. I would definitely recommend giving that a look for anything we've missed in this particular video. Now we always want to be paying attention to our missions. Even though we have them set to automatically activate, we still need to know what they are so that we can complete the parameters to actually do the mission. So when we go back down here to the Mule Deer mission pack, and I do find it easier to just find the mission we're after by going to the particular pack, this one, we need to take a Mule Deer buck from at least 47.5 meters. Now as a beginner, we don't have a range finder. However, there's still a way to find that out. Remember the marker we could place earlier? We're gonna do that here. We're gonna open our map, and then we're gonna look at that marker. So if we look in the very bottom center, when we mouse over this spot, it says about 0 0.063 kilometers. That would be 63 meters. That's over the 47 meter requirement. Therefore, we are gonna try to make this shot. Now here's is a kind of rare broadside shot. Also a thing, by the way, if you're crouching, you notice this is a little bit unstable. Crouch forward just a little bit and then take your shot. If you're moving forward for whatever reason and crouching, it stabilizes your crosshairs a lot. I would highly recommend doing that. I've mentioned already tracking skill and spotting skill. The Hunter Classic has another category for weapon skill, and the more animals you shoot with a particular weapon, the more you'll level up, the less weapon sway you'll get. So it is important, even I mentioned earlier shooting does for practice and stuff, that will level up your weapon score, that's another reason to do it. And you do want to be able to, you know, have as little weapon sway as possible. When you get to longer shots, more precise shots, it's going to be really key to not have a bunch of weapon sway. So we're picking up tracks as we go up through here, making sure we identify every clue that we can. And this should actually do our second Mule Deer mission, and probably our last Mule Deer mission for this particular video, but we see that lung blood there. This one we shot at 61 meters. So remember, we crouched forward just a little bit as we take, took that shot. 
How accurate was that 63 meters when we placed the marker and looked on the map? That's a super, super useful tool for you before you have a rangefinder. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of items you can buy in the Hunter Classic store, and you can do so with real money. If you want to buy that 300 that I mentioned earlier with, I think it would be like 10 bucks to buy the 300 and the scope, go for it. I'd highly recommend it. If you're, you know, wanting to kind of get past just having the 243, it's a great idea to do, but if you do want to earn it, it can be done relatively quickly. There are in the store though, camo options, range finders, other binoculars, range finding binoculars, tons of guns, scopes, all this sort of stuff that you can buy. But when you're getting started, and especially if you don't want to, you know, have to purchase all kinds of stuff, having that ability to, you know, use the tools at your disposal, like the marker and the map, they can really help you in completing those missions. And it is at this point that I turn you loose into the Hunter Classic, at least for now. Go out there, have fun. The best teacher for any game is experience. I can only do so much to help you to understand the game, and I hope what we did here so far today was helpful in getting you started. But the best thing to do is just go out there and experience the game. There is going to be a part two to this video. So if you have any questions regarding anything I said today, anything I didn't say today, anything I didn't cover, feel free to leave those in the comments below and I'll do my best to address those in the part two of our The Hunter Classic Beginner's Guide. Remember as well, check out the links in the description to the missions in the Hunter Wiki and the Hunter Wiki itself. There is a ton of information, literally anything you could ever want to know is on the wiki if you search for it, but I know it can be a little bit challenging to find the particular stuff and it is obviously much easier to have it shown to you in a format like this. On that note, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Best of luck on your hunts here in the Hunter Classic. And I'll see you next time.